Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be talking about 1998's Belly and its 25th anniversary 4K Blu-ray, courtesy of Lionsgate. So Belly was released in 1998. It is directed by Hype Williams, and the only film he ever directed. Hype Williams is a very famous music video director. California. And that's probably why he brought in a bunch of rappers, especially rappers who were at the height of their powers in 1998. This film was led by Nas, so the world, that. DMX, T Boss from TLC. I I always loved TLC. I always had a crush on Chili while I was growing up. It also features Method Man and plenty of other rappers and actors who pop up in this movie, including a very young 25-year-old Sean Paul who appears in this film. And this movie is the definition of style over substance because this movie looks and sounds fantastic, but when you dive into the plot and story of this movie, it's really not that good and you can poke some holes pretty much everywhere else except in the visuals and audio department. The movie starts off with Sincere and Tommy, played by DMX and Nas. The two of them, along Along with their buddies, they rob a club in a beautiful opening sequence. They steal a bunch of money, kill a bunch of people, and then after that they regroup, talk about what they're going to do, and then from that point on we got ourselves a movie. The problem is this movie's only 95 minutes long and they try to cram so much and try and tell a compelling story in those 95 minutes and it just does not work. It's very sloppy, it's very, very poorly acted. Putting Nas in the lead role was just a bad decision. As much as I love Nas the rapper, he's probably a top five rapper of all time. Nas the actor is probably a top five worst actor of all time. He has absolutely terrible delivery. He never raises or lowers his cadence when he's delivering lines. He portrays no emotion, even though his character is supposed to be this emotional. We don't even find out that he's supposed to be this emotional, caring person who has a good outlook on life until we hear his girlfriend talking about it. We never hear him really bringing it up because when he's trying to talk about his life and getting better, he just never shows emotion. He's very cold and flat throughout the entire film. And to have him in the lead role was just a poor decision. Meanwhile, on the other side, we got DMX, who's doing a great job everything he's doing in this movie until the last third of this movie i buy into dmx had that iconic raspy voice that works so well as a rapper and you believe him in this role as this angry guy who's not going to change his way every time we see him either him or somebody else is smoking a blunt or a big giant joint which i absolutely love throughout this movie i thought that was pretty funny it's almost like they said while they were about to shoot the scene like hey make sure you grab that prop over there because we need that in this scene because no matter what situation they're in somebody's smoking a blunt or a joint and passing it around i thought that was pretty funny so it was just really like they were going for this music video look, but they forgot that they were trying to tell a compelling story in there because this story is just not compelling. You know, after they robbed that club, they kind of got that crime in them and they decide, you know what, let's up the ante and let's start selling drugs now. Tommy heads off to this guy who's really the kingpin, the guy you go get the heroin from. I think it's some kind of new form of heroin though. And he's like, all right, I'll do that for you. But you have to come with me and do me a favor in Jamaica. That sequence is pretty cool. And we just see that Tommy, you know, he's very cold-blooded, but we kind of see that he's starting to get a little bit more emotional and trying to see the error of his ways. And then about two-thirds into the movie, he himself gets sent to prison, and they make a deal with him for him to come out and kill this guy. You know, he's a Christian minister, but they never say exactly what he is. But you can clearly see that it's basically riffing on what we know from Malcolm X. But the problem is, is if you do that in this movie, it makes absolutely absolutely no sense in comparison to what happened in Malcolm X. In Malcolm X, Malcolm X goes to jail for years in that film before he ends up changing his ways. Meanwhile, in this movie, Tommy goes to jail for what? A couple of weeks? And all of a sudden, he realizes the error of his ways. I believe more than likely what happened was, hey, he got himself a pretty good deal, and he's like, I'm taking this. I don't care, because there's just no way for me to believe that his character changed that much in that short amount of time. Like, he even have a scene with him and Nas. They're in a diner, and he's like, oh, my God. And he's like... Ain't hard to tell. My life's in a whole other direction, dog. So I can see that. Just because he has a suit on and small glasses. That's not how this works. I get what you're going for, but you needed more than 95 minutes for me to believe that this character has turned his whole life around and he's willing to do the right thing now. I just don't believe that. Also, they would never let this man out of prison to go do this. It just does not make any logical sense. It just does not work. I get what they were going for because the story of this movie is trying to tell you, you know, these kids, they get stuck in this lifestyle and there's no way out and we want to see them eventually get out, change their lives 
lives, turn it around. But unfortunately, this movie is just too short for that kind of arc, especially the way you set this up, two-thirds of this movie, and then you just kind of wanted to change it at the very end. Uh, it just does not work. It's very sloppy. It's laid out awfully. But, like I said... You don't really watch this movie for the story and plot, you really watch it for the visuals and audio, and this movie just nails all of that. This movie is more like a mood, it's more like something that you kind of vibe to. You watch this movie, you enjoy it, you take in the beautiful visuals, you enjoy the music that's throughout this film, and that's why Hype Williams is a fantastic music video director, and when you watch this movie you can enjoy that. You can enjoy those aspects. It's fun to see these guys trying to act. You know, it's a movie that's almost so bad it's good because it's very, very, very entertaining. You're never bored throughout it. It's just that if you think about it and you try and boil it down to the plot and story, it just does not work on any level. So I can recommend the film for the visuals and audio, but I cannot recommend it for the story and plot and especially for its acting. It just does not work. Even though I think that DMX does a pretty good job, DMX actually can act in my opinion. You know, he's got only a few gears, but he actually can act whereas Nas just cannot act at all he's a really really bad actor but man you know what doesn't matter he's pretty good at this rap thing so i think he'll be all right so overall i think the film is okay it's not a great film it's one you can revisit every few years but it's not the greatest of movies it's got that cult following mainly because of its visuals and audio there was even a 2006 sequel that has no connection to this one but that just goes to show you the influence that belly had on other people and you know it would have been cool to see hype williams maybe get a little bit more money maybe a better writer and they could have made a more compelling story but unfortunately that's not how it works most of the money actually went to that opening sequence so you know, I feel like a lot of the people in this movie were kind of doing Hype Williams a favor more than anything, and that's why we didn't get real actors. They probably couldn't afford it, so it makes sense in that aspect, but it just does not work as a film overall. But we're going to talk about its Lionsgate 4K Blu-ray right now. So I actually got this at Best Buy for $10. If you've known Best Buy, they're pretty much just having a fire sale right now, trying to dump all of their stock, and they put this out there for 10 bucks. I actually pre-ordered this last year. It was supposed to come out on January 24th, 2023. I pre-ordered it. I pre-ordered the Steelbook that came out. Thought the Steelbook looked awesome. And you know what? Got delivered to my house. Open the box. There is not a thing in the box. It was a completely empty box. They put the packaging material in there, but they did not put a 4K Blu-ray. They just put the stuff to make sure it got to be safe. They put the bubble wrap in there, but they completely forgot the Steelbook. Makes absolutely no sense. And when I called up Best Buy, this is what I mean with Best Buy and their awful customer service. They were out of Steelbooks. They're like, oh, the best we could do is refund your order. But I'm like, I pre-ordered this months ago. You guys forgot the movie. I don't know how you completely forget to put the film in the box that you're sending. How do you just send an empty box? Box, never seen anything like that they refused to even like compensate me the best they said they could do is refund me so i said forget it didn't get the 4k blu-ray but then when i saw it, it was 10 bucks this year i said you know what let me regroup and see what this 4k blu-ray is all about so i have the regular slipcover version here and again Beautiful slipcover. You know, I thought the steelbook looked a little bit nicer, but the slipcover is really nice. You come inside, you look at that same artwork underneath. Love the artwork on this. Love the white and blue. It really works for this type of film that this is. You come inside, you get a Blu-ray, and you get a 4K Blu-ray. And there's only one choice of audio track. It's Adobe Atmos track that is compatible with Adobe True HD 7.1. You get a choice of subtitles of either English or Spanish, but that's really it. You have no other audio options. Your visual options are HDR10 and Dolby Vision. That 1080p Blu-ray is just a compressed version version of the 4k blu-ray and as far as extras go there really aren't many there is an audio commentary track which is actually pretty good it's it's with hype williams so if you want to check that one out i can recommend it i think that's something that's really interesting you can dive into his thought process about making the film that's a good audio commentary track you get a deleted scene a music video but that's really it there are almost no extras no interviews it's really bad as far as extras go in my opinion i i really think they half-assed the extras might as well have just put none on here just put the audio commentary track on here don't try and make it feel like something that has a a lot of special features on them both menus have a special features option and really there's nothing under both of them that was a pretty big miss in my opinion as far as the extras go uh i really just i'm really upset that they really didn't include almost any this is the kind of movie you're labeling it the 25th anniversary edition maybe you could have got an interview with somebody who appears in the film that's all i'm saying looking back on the movie most of these people are all alive. I get it. You can't get DMX. He's since passed away. RIP. But still. Das is still around. T-Boz is still around. Hype Williams is still around. You can interview these people and, you know, get their thought process on the making of this film. But they couldn't do that. But really, the shining star of this is the audio and the visuals. The film itself, that's the same thing. That's the shining star. You don't really go into it for the acting. You go into it for the beautiful audio and visuals. So you just really hope that that stuff all looks and sounds great. And as far as the audio goes, it's a fantastic Dolby Atmos track. Like I said, this movie is very 
music heavy, so you really hope that they did a great job mixing that, and they did. There's also a lot of gunshots throughout this movie, so they're making good use of your channels with that aspect. It's funny because this movie actually has the trailer for Dolby Atmos in front of it, and usually when Dolby does that, they know they got themselves a pretty good Dolby Atmos track. This is something you could show off to people and be like, hey, you want to see a really good Dolby Atmos track that makes great use of your channels? You put this one on. But again, it doesn't have the same flair as like a lot of other films because it's not really designed necessarily for Adobe Atmos track like with the Evil Dead Rise one. This is one I'll always use is because each thing is adjusted individually in there when they're editing the mix of that Adobe Atmos track. Each sound effect is adjusted. You know, this film was shot 26 years ago. So when you look back at it, they weren't really planning for a Adobe Atmos track, but they were able to, you know, separate the channels now. So that stuff kind of makes it a little bit more noticeable and it's not the greatest Adobe Atmos track you've ever heard. But for a film like this that is very audio heavy, the Atmos track is still pretty damn solid, but it's not something that's individually designed for each channel, if that makes sense to you guys. It's something that was shot at the time with great audio and great visuals, but it wasn't necessarily designed for Adobe Atmos track at the time because the tech wasn't there. So it had to be mixed a little bit differently differently and if you compare it to like a modern action or horror Adobe Atmos track it maybe doesn't hit those levels but it's still a really 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 good Adobe Atmos track and now as far as the visuals go like I said this movie is shot like a 95 minute long music video so it looks great I mean the transitions are fantastic that's the stuff that really stood out to me was just how beautiful this movie looked I loved it I loved looking at this movie it was like eye candy you know they have blue filters at certain parts of the movie which I just absolutely loved like I said the transitions Transitions look fantastic. All the apartments these guys have are amazing to look at. It's just stunning to look at visually. So you hope that the HDR10 and Adobe Vision do great work. And even the 1080p compressed Blu-ray in here is pretty good, but it's really when you jump to that 4K and you get that brightness increase from the HDR that you really notice how good looking of a movie this is. Now it's not a flawless film in the visual department because there are certain areas, this movie has some really dark, dark, dark scenes and you hope they can hit those deep blacks. And for the most part they do. But there are certain areas where it kind of looks a little bit overly grainy, which they do retain the film grain throughout the entire film. But because of these deep black scenes and they hold on for a long time, you're going to notice a lot of film grain at very specific moments, very minor moments. Like overall, the visuals are stunning, but you will notice these flaws while you're watching the 4K Blu-ray. It's nothing that's going to take you out of it, but if you're looking for it, they are there. But really, the audio and the visuals are the shining star of this entire package. If you understand what Belly is and you appreciate what the film is, then you're going to appreciate this 4k blu-ray it's really there for the fans of this film if you're somebody who's never seen this film i can't necessarily recommend it because it's not a good movie but it is entertaining it's really nice to look at it sounds great it's one i can definitely recommend if you can get it for the price that i got it for for 10 bucks but if you have to pay a little bit more than that it's just such a bare bones package i definitely can't recommend it at the full price or anything over 15 bucks but 10 bucks this movie's probably worth it at that you're getting a huge visual and audio upgrade and again it's something you could show off your system with so it's worth it to have it for that but if you're somebody who's a fan of this movie and you were hoping for some cool new extras you didn't get any of those on here so really you're just in it for the movie itself and it's probably worth it for that if you're a fan of it if i was going to give this entire 4k blu-ray package a score of 1 to 10 i would give it an average 7 out of 10. Nothing special, but it's also nothing that's atrocious and offensive unless you're talking about the extras, because those are pretty atrocious and offensive. And the film itself, the plot and the story, eh, like I said, not much logical sense in there, but that's not what you're here for. But anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for me here on another episode of Let's Talk, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn notifications on, share the video, and you can even become a channel member. We have a Friends of the Channel tier. We also have a Producers tier where you're going to find Mr. Smelly Potato, Jason Martin, John Doe Juggalo, and Nocturnal. And you can even become a channel director and have your choice review each and every single month. Have a private conversation with me if you would like to take advantage of that. Plus plenty more perks. And that's where you're going to find Frank's Media and Reviews, who also has a YouTube channel you guys should check out right now. But if you got no money to throw our way, we don't mind at all. We just appreciate you checking out this video. And if you'd like to continue to support us, just get out in those streets. Tell your friends about us. And then after you're done doing all of that, we'll be seeing you around.